Tefid variable stars are named after the constellation Cepheus. So if you were to have access to a long exposure, good quality camera, and you happen to find yourself in the right place, when you look up, you can actually see the constellation of Cepheus and how it looks like. But Cepheus, if you don't know, is actually the name of a king from Greek mythology, right? So it looks a bit like my dude here. Ah, uh, it's like, you know, people have a good imagination. So they sort of like imagine or visualize the uh, constellation of stars here to be looking something like this one. Okay, so you can see the king here. All right, so the, re the thing that we are concerned about with Cepheus is that uh, it's been well documented. So there are a lot of known stars of Cepheus. And if you find yourself in the North Pole, okay, you can actually see the constellation and also the different stars that, that, it, is, that it is made out of. So I'm going to do a few adjustments on the settings. Okay. the stars. Okay, so we all know from the previous video that a Cepheid variable has a changing intensity. So if you look closely at this simulation, the brightness, there are some stars that will flicker, flicker. But the problem here is that you know the period can be quite long, and we ain't got that kind of time. So thanks to the modern technology, I can speed up the time okay i can change the time and basically allow the stars to move and for us to observe one of these stars okay so if you were to zoom in and look closely some of these stars the intensity is actually changing like for example this one here okay so i'm not sure whether it transfers or not but you can see this star is dimming dimming then it's breathing brighter dim bright dim bright Dim, right okay so yep that is a cfit variable so it is based on this that we can actually find the luminosity okay and if we actually look up on uh, on your skywalker you can find a lot of cfit variable stars here okay lots of information for you to play with but the whole idea is because of this varying intensity we know or we can reliably measure the luminosity this is what makes it a standard candle Let's look at that, an example. This is from Collins as well, and you're asked to briefly state what is meant by a standard candle. So CFID variables are an, an, are an example of a standard candle, but basically they are astronomical objects, things that you see in the sky. Whose, what do we know? Luminosity. Luminosity, L is known and reliably estimated okay so you have watched the video and you know how we estimate the luminosity of cfit variables okay so in part b we have a cfit variable star in galaxy g1 just an unknown galaxy it's found to have a measured flux intensity of 1.18 times 10 to the power of negative 4. So I'll call this F1. The distance to G1 is known to be 1.5 times 10 to the power of 12 meters. So I'm just going to call this, I guess, D1, distance 1. A telescope observes, observed a CFIT, CFIT variable star, with the same period, ah, same period in galaxy G2 with a measured flux intensity of 6.1 times 10 to the power negative 15 watt per meter squared. So this is F2, okay? This is a CFIT variable. So basically what we, are, what, we are, what we are mentioning here is um, there is, let's say, okay, let me try to draw, let me try to draw a galaxy. Okay, let's say this is G1. Okay, there are many types of galaxy. Maybe I draw a spiral galaxy. Okay, we don't know a lot of information about the galaxy. But inside the galaxy G1, there's a CFID variable star. Let's say I call this uh, star S, S1. Okay, and inside another galaxy, I don't know where the other galaxy is. Okay, I'm going to draw another galaxy here. Maybe this galaxy is like here. Okay. It's like a cluster of stars. And let's say this is G2. 
Okay, and there's another star that I observe in G2, let's say S2. So the star S1 and S2 have the same period. So, you know, if S1 and S2, number one, they are CFID stars or CFID variables. Number two, they have the same period. This means they will have the same luminosity. Okay, so you just imagine maybe maybe the Earth is here. Actually, have no idea where the Earth is. So let's say let's say the observer is here. I'm gonna just draw an eye for an observer. Okay, so you are here, and you and then you observe star one, and we can also observe star two. There's so many stars in this night sky. Okay, so when we observe both of them, you notice that they have the same period, same variation uh, of uh, intensity or brightness or flicker. Okay, so then we can say that they have the same luminosity. Okay, so if we think about this, and this one here is D1. All right, and then I mean this distance D1 we already know, and then the sun, the light, the sunlight that is uh, from S1, sunlight, starlight, the electromagnetic radiation from S1 is F1. Okay, the intensity is F1, and then from S2. Okay, this one here is F2. Does that make sense? Okay, so technically speaking, we are looking at two different galaxies, okay, and we identified two stars, they are CFID variables, okay, and they have the same period, so same luminosity, all right? So if that is the case, I can then use the equation F is equal to, so think of your radiant flux, radiant, flux intensity f is equal to l over 4 pi d squared okay so l is constant meaning this one constant because they have the same period so i can then say that the flux intensity is proportional to 1 over d squared Okay, so inverse square law has appeared again, and you're asking about the distance uh, of the galaxy G2. Actually, to make this a bit more accurate, G2 will be further away. So maybe I pop it down here. So how you know G2 is further away? Eh? Well, F2 is smaller. Okay, so this one would be D2. So I'll write out the ratio first, okay, because it's inversely proportional. I can write F1 over F2 is equal to D2 over D1 square. Okay, so we have F1. Uh, F1 would be 1.18 times 10 to the power of negative 4. 1.18 times 10 to the power of negative 4. And F2, F2 would be 6.1 times 10 to the power of negative 15. Okay, we're just transferring values, okay? Your second distance D2 is what you're looking for, and we have D1. The distance D1 here is 1.5 times 10 to the power of 21. Don't forget your square. So from here, we can easily press our calculator to get D2. So by pressing on my calculator, hopefully I get this right, this is 2.086 or 2.09. I guess everything is 2SF, so I'll give it 2SF. 2.1 times 10 to the power of 26 meters. Okay, so Galaxy 2 is really, really far away. All right, and uh, that's it. So basically, we're still using the good old radiant flux intensity equation. Okay, luminosity per unit area, or L over 4 pi d squared. We identified that the luminosity for both stars are the same, because they are CFID variables, okay, and they have the same period. So I look at this galaxy, oh, it is the same, uh, there's a star that has the same period as another star in another galaxy, hence, you know, I can use the, the fact that they have the same luminosity and just use simple ratio if I already know the separation or the distance for one star. Like this distance is 1.5 times 10 to the power of 21 and by calculation this distance will now be 2.1 times 10 to the power of 26 meter okay 
So it's just putting our telescope to the sky and measuring how bright it is per unit area, okay? And also measuring the period. That's how we determine distances from objects that are very far away because ain't nobody going to use a ruler to measure this kind of distance. So this is how we estimate really, really big distance for astronomy. I'll see you in the next example. Stay lit.